Here we have a slightly more complicated proof that has to do with parallel lines. Uh, we're supposed to write the proof for this. So we want to give all the reasons and the statements and tell which lines we're using uh, for our statements. What we're trying to prove here is that EF is parallel to JG. So we want to show that this line and this line are parallel. We're told that this line and this line, so DE and FH are parallel to start with, and also that angle 1 and angle 6 are congruent. So how are we going to prove that these two lines are parallel? Angle 1 and angle 6 seem really far away from each other. If we could prove that, oh, I don't know, angle 2 and angle 6 were congruent, then we could, um, by the fact that these are corresponding angles in a transversal situation, we could show that these two lines are parallel. So that would be nice. And since 1 and 6 are the same, if I could prove that 1 and 2 are the same, then I could uh, uh, know that, that 2 and 6 are the same. So, and, and I think we can actually do that. We can show that angle 1 and angle 2 are the same because even though it might not look like it to you, this is another transversal situation. So think of DE as just stretching on here and FH is stretching on. These two we know are parallel and they're cut by this other line. So this is a transversal line right here. So what this makes one and two is alternate interior angles. So if these two are the same but because they're alternate interior angles, and 1 and 6 are the same, that means 2 and 6 are the same. Those are corresponding angles, therefore these two lines are parallel. So that's the reasoning. Let's see if we can write that out in a proof. So line 1, I think we should start this by just uh, doing the given uh, parallel of ED and FH. So ED is parallel to FH. And this is because given. Once we've said that, we can say that 1 and 2 are congruent angles. So angle 1 is congruent. Angle 2. The reason here is because they are alternate interior angles uh, are congruent if lines parallel. And this would rely on the fact that those lines are parallel. So I guess we need to make a notation that our, we're using line one. OK. Now, we've got one and two set equal to each other. We need to refer to the fact that one and six are the same as each other. So let's just write that. Angle one is congruent to angle six. And this was just given. It's our second piece of given information. And once we've done that, we can say that 2 is congruent to 6. The reason we can say that is because of the transitive property. Um, and, you know, The transitive property says that if A equals B and B equals C, then A also equals C. That's transitive property. We're doing the exact same thing here. So here we can say that angle 2 is congruent to angle 6. And the reason is the transitive property. And I guess that uses both lines 2 and 3. All right, almost done. Now that we've said angle 2 is congruent to angle 6, we can say that EF is parallel to JG. So let's do that. The reason we can do that is because 2 and 6 are corresponding angles. So corresponding angles are congruent. So lines are parallel. And that would just refer back to line 4. All right, let me make this a little bit bigger. So there is our proof. We know that ED and FH are parallel because that's given. 
that makes angles one and two alternate interior angles, uh, and they have to be congruent because those two lines are parallel. Then uh, we have the given information that one is, is congruent to angle six, and therefore two is congruent to angle six by the transitive property, and that makes these corresponding angles prove that these two lines are parallel. So that is a little bit of work with uh, a proof with parallel lines.